Hello everyone. So today we're going to be answering questions pertaining to enzymes. So the first question I'm going to read uh, reads, one, in the stomach, proteins are hydrolyzed by the enzyme known as A, trypsin, whose pH is, whose optimum pH is alkaline. B, lipase, whose optimum pH is acidic. C, pepsin, whose optimum pH is acidic. D, amylase, whose optimum pH is alkaline. E, maltase, whose optimum pH is acidic. F, I do not know. So the correct answer is uh, pepsin. So pepsin is produced in the stomach. However, you need to note that pepsin is produced in its inactive form as pepsinogen. For fear that if it were produced in its active form as, as pepsin, it would actually digest the stomach was. So what happens is that when pepsin is produced, there's an acid that's called uh, HCl. So you have your hydrochloric acid that works on uh, pepsinogen, thereby converting it to pepsin, which is uh, the more active form. Okay, so pepsin is worked on, a uh, pepsinogen is worked on by hydro chloric acid to convert it to pepsin. Now you notice that HCl is an acid, therefore the environment in the stomach is actually acidic. So the optimum pH is acidic. Two, choose a statement which is true about enzymes. A, enzymes do not require cofactors. B, enzymes do not, enzymes do affect the amount of activation energy required by the reaction. C. Enzymes increase the amount of activation energy required by the reaction. D. Enzymes decrease the amount of activation energy required by the reaction. E. None of the above statements is true. F. I do not know. Okay. So for an enzyme uh, react an enzyme catalyzed reaction, for instance, is your XY plane. If this is your chemical reaction, right? This is your chemical reaction, and this is where the, the products are being formed, right? So, for instance, these are the products. This is time. So, what you notice is that for an enzyme, for a chemical reaction to occur, there is what we call um, an activation energy, okay? So this activation energy is the energy required to start up that chemical reaction. So what happens is that enzymes decrease the amount of activation energy. For instance, this is the activation energy, right? So an enzyme will decrease that activation energy in such a way that this chemical reaction will take place faster than it's actually supposed to because the amount of energy required to start it has been decreased. Therefore, uh, that's how um, enzyme catalyzed reactions are able to take place faster. Number three, the lock and key theory of an enzyme action was proposed by. So, the man that actually proposed it is called Fisher. It's called the Fisher lock and key theory that talks about um, the enzyme and the substrate in regards to the lock and uh, key theory. Okay, question four. So when you look at these other options, uh, Koshland, uh, Chagaf, so this has to do with the DNA hypothesis, to do with the uh, DNA being derived as a double helix, as well as what, because uh, we have what we call the Chagaf rules, where the number of th thymine bases are equal to the number of alanine bases, then Watson and Crick, Rosalind Franklin, all these have to do with... Uh, Investigation of the DNA double helix. Question four. The optimum pH of the enzyme trypsin, which is found in the small intestine, is A, acidic, B, above pH of 7, C, neutral, D, either alkaline or acidic, E, below pH of 6, F, I do not know. So the correct answer in this particular question is that, uh, so for trypsin, it works under an alkaline environment. Okay, and for an alkaline environment, it's a pH that's above 7. Okay, so when you look at your pH, 
7 is what we call your neutral. Below 7, it's acidic. Above uh, 7, it's going to be alkaline. When you look at your digestive system, for instance, this is your mouth all the way, uh, your stomach, for instance, your stomach bag, then it continues down the intestines. So from the mouth here, it's more of your alkaline. In the stomach, it's acidic. Then as you go down there, it becomes alkaline as well due to the enzymes that are produced that are alkaline in nature. So on our platform, we have topics, past papers, and tutorial questions as I make this video. So the topics videos allow you to learn the topics from scratch, okay? Now at the end of each uh, topic, uh, let me give you an example of, uh, of maybe carbohydrates, okay? At the end of each topic, videos, uh, you'll be able to assess yourself with the quizzes. These are MCQs based on the exam questions, okay? So which assess your, your understanding, okay? So let me try to see where we could, yeah. So for example, this says choose the incorrect statement, okay? You choose, you'll be able to mark you, okay? That's uh, one way of actually ensuring that you are learning. Then, um, uh, but in addition to these uh, topics, videos, and the quizzes that come after, we also have past papers. We've got a part where we've arranged them according to the topics. Okay. By the time probably you're watching this video, you're going to have over 10 of them, 10 to over 10 topics, because they're already being worked on as I make this. Then you also have other past papers arranged according to the years. Then um, the tutorial questions as well. Um, kind of like the quiz uh, questions, but then in video form as well, just to practice each topic. So with this, you yeah, are ready to prepare for biology exams and assessments that come your way. Okay, so to sign up, use the link in the description below. Well, friends, that's it for this video. To access more of the answered questions, click the link below.